Hi everyone, hope you are all doing well. Today I'm going to talk about my Canon EOS R rig with Konica Hexen lenses. First of all, for those who never heard of Konica, it is a Japanese company that was one of the top camera manufacturers in the 70s and 80s. It merged with Minota in 2003, and the camera division of the new company was later bought by Sony in 2006. That's when Sony introduced their Alpha system. I will talk more about the Konica lenses later, but today I want to show you how I rigged them up with Konica EOS R for video shooting. Let's talk about the cage first. This cage is from ASIN. I believe it is a fairly new company based in Poland. I chose this one over the small rig cage for two reasons. First, on the BNH product page, it shows there are two stop pins at the bottom, which would prevent any camera movement inside the cage. This is very important to me because I want to use the follow focus. The focus rings on these lenses are well dampened which means when you pull focus, it will create a large amount of force to push the camera away. However, when I received the cage from b &H, there is no pins at the bottom. Instead, there are two small holes. It looks like you can put the pins on if you have them, but I found nowhere to purchase the pins. So I checked the manufacturer's website and realized that there may be two different versions of the cage. Other than the pins, the right sides are different too. The good news is that even without the stop pins, the cage works perfectly. There is no camera movement at all when proling focus. The other reason I chose ASIN is that I like the design of their top handle. It can slide back and forth, so you can adjust its position depending on the center of gravity of the complete rig. There may be a third reason. It does look more beautiful than the small rig cage in my opinion. On the bottom of the cage, I have an Arca Swiss type plate and a clamp. Uh, these are from Small Rig. The plate has two screws, which again would help hold the camera in place when pulling focus. I put the same one on my gimbal so that I can switch between the rig and gimbal easily. Under the quick re release clamp is a Small Rig base plate with dual 50mm rod clamp. Then the last the a Manfrotto type plate. Obviously, the microphone is on the top handle and the follow focus is attached to the rod. Next, I want to talk about the monitor. I don't really want to mount the monitor on the top because with a small setup like this, it may become top heavy. And if I do so, I still need to figure out another way to place the microphone. So I decided to mount the monitor behind the camera on the rod. I have a real bug uh, at the rear end of the rod with a cold shoe mount, both from Small Rig. And for the monitor mount, I tried both Small Rig and Andy Scene. The Andy Scene monitor mount is made specifically for Atmos Ninja 5. I can't say which one I like better. The Small Rig is bigger and feels more solid, but it only has 140 degrees of tilt, and it doesn't have stop pins. So you really have to tighten it down to prevent the monitor from rotating which requires a tool. On the other hand, Andy Scene is smaller, not as solid as Small Rig. It does have two stop pins that work as expected, but somehow they don't fit very well. As you can see, there is a small gap between the monitor and the mount. The screw can come loose, so I have to retighten it quite often. It has 180 degrees of tilt, which works better for low angle shot as compared to the Small Rig mount. Next, Let's look at the focus gear adapters. Both Tilta and the Zhiyun follow focus come with these kind of adapters. Unfortunately, they are not ideal for these vintage lenses, mainly because the focus ring on most of these lenses moves when focusing. 
That means the adapter needs to be wide enough to allow for this movement and still remain good contact with the follow focus. The Ziyun adapters are just too narrow and too thin. And the Tilta adapters are wider and thicker, and they work much better. But there is another problem. Some of these lenses have a good amount of focus throw. For example, the 57mm lens has more than 180 degrees of focus throw. If I use one of these adapters, because the end sticks out, it will interfere with either the microphone or the rod. So the solution is this. They come in different sizes. I just needed to measure the diameter of each of the lenses and choose the correct size. Now I have these rings in four different sizes for these 10 lenses. I might get more down the road if I find it too cumbersome to switch them between lenses. So the last component is the lens hood. I think using a matte box would be an overkill for this small setup. So I decided to use the lens hood instead. This hood is from another Konica lens that has a 82mm filter ring and is a clamp-on type lens hood. All of these lenses have a 55mm filter ring except one, which has a 62mm filter ring. So I have a few different set rings here, 55 to 62, 62 to 82, and 82 to 77 stack down ring. This setup allows me to put on the lens hood and be able to use a 77mm filter inside the hood. If I use an 82mm filter, then I need to take off the lens hood, adjust the filter, and then put the hood back on, which is not very convenient. So that's my setup of Canon EOS R and Konica Hessen lenses for video shooting. If you have any questions, please leave your comments below. In the coming weeks, I will provide more details about these Konica lenses and show you how they perform both in photography and videography. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy. See you next time. All right, YouTube routine. The details are in the description below. All right, YouTube routine. The details are in the des description, 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 description. All right. All right, YouTube routine. The details are in this. And uh, also hit the bell. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so.